The HBCU Roll Call of Accomplished Women is thick with achievement. The astonishing literary odysseys of Spellman's Alice Walker, the hypnotic melodies of Grambling's Erica Badu, the indispensable advocacy of Spellman's Marion Wright Edelman, the relentless pursuit of truth and justice by Baltimore State's attorney and Tuskegee alum Marilyn Mosby, the sacred poetry of Fisk's Nikki Giovanni, the groundbreaking sports journalism of FAMU's Pam Oliver, the hustle and diverse acting flow of Howard's Taraji P. Henson, or fellow Bison Felicia Rashad's unofficial designation as Black America's mom. I'll confirm that Black women have always been the backbone of our communities and sources of awe, wonder, and inspiration. Michael Jordan, Hakeem Olajuwon, Patrick Ewing, titans of the men's college hoops from that golden era, the early 1980s. But what about the women from that same period of time? Many of those things can get lost to the fog of time. When plumbing the depths of the hoops fans' memories, it can often feel like it's Cheryl Miller and no one else. For our next story, we go back to my hometown, Philadelphia, which happens to also be the birthplace of one of the best women's college basketball hoops players of all time, Yolanda Lady. What is the true nature of our dreams? Random and mysterious stories born from our subconscious, or perhaps they provide a glimpse into our destiny. Lady on the drive, beautiful. For one of collegiate basketball's greatest female players, it was one such dream that shaped the trajectory of her life. Yolanda Laney grew up in the Germantown neighborhood of Philadelphia, famed as the birthplace of the anti-slavery movement. It was on the hard courts there where she found her first love. I was out in the playground and there was a young lady. She was in college and I was eight years old. I saw her out there playing with all the guys. And once I saw that, I said, whoa. I asked my mom, can you get me a basketball? That was my first real basketball. I'll never forget it. it was a red, white, and blue basketball. And when I saw her playing with the guys, that's when I fell in love with basketball. That same year, Laney experienced a seminal moment. I was in the third grade and I had a dream that I was supposed to attend Cheney University. And in the dream, I was on my way going to school. I'm on a bus and a gentleman gets on and he had on this blue and white jacket and I looked at him. When he walked by me, I saw Cheney State. I saw that jacket going in and it said that I was supposed to go to school at Cheney. I never thought about that dream again until my senior year when I was being recruited by all the major schools. Laney would go on to star at West Philadelphia High School, earning All-State and McDonald's All-American honors her senior year. After a glittering prep career, the offers poured in. I was getting recruited by over 75 colleges. At the time, my top choice was the University of Kansas. I had offers from Michigan, Tennessee, Georgia, South Carolina, Connecticut. But destiny had another plan. One of Laney's counselors from a local recreation center took her to see a game at a small college on the outskirts of Philadelphia. He took me up to Cheney University, and I was like, this is where I was, had the dream that I was supposed to go to school. I hadn't thought about Cheney. I didn't know Cheney was right in my backyard, that it was a powerhouse basketball program in the country. They were in the top four that year. So I went up to Cheney, I sat there, I watched the game, and I was so blown away with the talent that was on that floor. Starting at guard for Cheney State, number 44, a 5'10 sophomore from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Yolanda Laney. Laney played for legendary head coach C. Vivian Stringer. In over four years, they built an unassailable legacy. Yolanda Laney, great ball control, beautiful move. Laney grabbing on Rodman, scores! In 1982, Cheney became the first HBCU women's basketball team to make it to a national title game. I think that 
choosing an HBCU, I've said this over and over again. I wouldn't change my decision for a second. It was a historical moment to be a small HBCU passing by all the powerhouse universities, playing against them and rising to the top, which nobody expected. Even when I made my decision to go to Cheney, people were telling me, why are you going to Cheney? Why are you going to Cheney? You shouldn't be going to Cheney. You can go to any big university that you want to. And they, they were right. But the spirit of the Lord led me, and I wound up playing in four Sweet 16s, four Elite Eights, two Final Fours, one championship game, and we almost won. Lainey garnered All-America honors before flying her trade overseas in Spain and Switzerland. After her European adventures, Lainey came home to attend law school. But the siren's call of the hard court meant she was never far from the game. After fulfilling the destiny dreamt of as a child, Lainey knew she wanted to pass that dream on, becoming a youth coach for over 30 years. Watching them persevere, watching them train every day, watching them get the grades in school, because I always told them, each one teach one. I said, you can't have a basketball scholarship if you don't make the academic transition come together with receiving an athletic scholarship. You have to have the grades. They all listened. They all went on to school. And I love them all um, for that. Those kids are my legacy. Layton's two children, Bernadja and Shakaris, who both go on to play collegially. Bernadja attended Rutgers University, where she played for her mom's old college coach, Hall of Famer, and my friend, C. Vivian Stringer. <laughs> 